In this episode of the House of Hacks, I show how I make my shop vac easier to use. Hi makers, builders, and do-it-yourselfers, Harley here. In general, I'm pretty bad at house cleaning. I tend to put off vacuuming and straightening up until it's unbearable. Around the workshop, this is exacerbated by the inconvenience of the shop vac. It has a tendency to tip over on its own accord. It's big and awkward in a cramped space, and it's uncomfortably loud. I wanted a change based on some requirements. Minimal daily setup. It should basically always be ready to use and not take much to clean up at the end of the day. Be convenient when using. I don't want to drag it all over the shop from one tool to another. Quiet. I want it really, really quiet. Inexpensive. I didn't want to spend a lot of money. So to solve all these issues, I made it into a central vac system. At some point, I'd like to get a real dust collection system, but right now that's outside both my money and space budgets. Today, I'll show the box I built for the vacuum, the way I plumbed it into the shop, and how I turn it on and off. In a future episode, I plan to show before and after measurements of both noise and vacuum efficiency, and finally some future improvements I'd like to do. Since noise was a big issue for me, I built this box to hold the vacuum and muffle its whine. In the junk pile from previous projects, I had some rigid insulation foam, softer foam rubber, and some scrap 2x2. I figured this would work well as the main components. I measured the shop vac dimensions, added a couple inches to each side for air circulation, and the thickness of the foam. This gave me the target outside dimensions. I went to the local home store and got two sheets of the cheapest 3 8 inch sheathing I could find. This is usually used under roofs and siding, so it has a lot of visual imperfections, but it's good enough for this use and really cheap. When I got home, I sliced up the sheathing and built the box by simply screwing it to the scrap 2x2. It's not pretty or square, but it does serve the purpose. When I got the sheathing, I also picked up a piano hinge and some casters. The casters I mounted on the bottom to make it easy to move around, and of course I used the hinge for the door to give me easy access to the shop vac inside. I mounted three spare electrical boxes in one corner on the inside. Two of the boxes go through holes to the back, and the other points into the box. I'll get to the details of all that in a minute. Next, I cut up the foam and used spray adhesive to glue it to each of the sides. Finally, I cut a hole in the side for the hose to run through, and a hole in the top for the exhaust vent. The electrical part has two components, a line voltage side and a low voltage side. On the line voltage side, one of the boxes pointing to the outside has a male plug on it. This allows me to plug an, an extension cord into the box. This type of plug is convenient to use on projects like this, but I couldn't find one at the normal places I typically get electrical parts. I ended up having to order this online. If you're looking for something like this, search for flanged inlet receptacle. There's also an Amazon associate link in the description. The box inside just has a normal duplex plug wired to the plug on the other box. The boxes are connected by a standard conduit connector. Combined, the two boxes provide a clean way to run power through the wall of the wooden box. I plug two things into the duplex outlet, a surplus low voltage wall wart power supply and this power switch tail. The power supply provides low voltage for the switch. The power switch tail is basically in a short extension cord with a relay built into it. When a low voltage is applied to these two connectors, it turns on the plug. This allows low voltage devices, like microcontrollers or other digital electronics, to easily control line powered devices, like shop backs. I put another electrical box pointing to the outside for a remote switch. This is the low voltage side. I install the barrel style power connector in the electrical box pointing into the larger enclosure for the wall wart output to plug into. On the outside of this box, I installed a standard RJ45 connector plate, like we used to use for those old-fashioned telephones. The connectors have four wires. 
The barrel power connector is attached to two of the connectors on the RJ45 jack. The other two lines of the RJ45 run through the electrical box and go to the relay control connectors on the power switch tail. I then built a little switch box. It has an RJ45 connector on the side and two switches, red and green. Inside, it has a simple flip-flop circuit. Press the green button and the circuit turns on. Press the red button and the circuit turns off. A standard four conductor telephone uh, cord connects the remote box on the side to the big box with the vacuum in it. I have a pretty long cord here that allows me to turn this on and off from anywhere in the shop. If you want more details of how this works, please leave a comment letting me know and I'll make another video about it. If you're interested in the evolution of the design of this switch, there's a video on my second channel going into those details. For plumbing, I use 2 inch black ABS drain pipe. This is pretty close to the diameter of the flexible hose that is standard on my vacuum. I ran a straight section across the ceiling at, with a couple sections running down in key areas of my workshop. I used sweeping connectors for smoother airflow and to minimize places where dust can get caught. I held it all in place with perforated strapping tape and some screws. Most of the connections are just press fit. I didn't want to use cement in case I need to take it apart to clean it out, move it, or do other sorts of maintenance. However, the sections that run down had a tendency to fall apart with just the friction fit. So I put a short self-tapping screw in each one to hold them together. It's still pretty easy to remove the screw if I need to take them apart. For the ports, I first looked at blast gates at the local woodworking store. They were pretty expensive and not terribly well made. I really didn't think they were a very good value. So I thought about making glass gates of my own. I looked online and found some designs, but they were just more complicated to make than I wanted to deal with, and I didn't have any of the materials in my scrap bin. So I made my own based on the design of the ports of the house's central vac system. They're basically a hinged flap with a bit of foam to seal them and some magnets to hold them closed. They're epoxied to a standard plumbing fixture. The flex hose stays in with a press fit. So that's pretty much it for the construction details. How well does it all work? I'll cover that in a future part two episode. If you're interested in part two or other DIY type videos of this nature, click the subscribe button and YouTube will let you know when they're released. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, go make something. It doesn't have to be perfect, just have fun.